Deep Dive Film School makes no claim of ownership of the film footage used in this episode. The film footage is owned entirely by the copyright holders. Also, we're going to spoil the hell out of this movie, so this is your warning. Welcome to Deep Dive Film School. Oh, I hope you're ready. This week we're getting into our third installment of our Paul Verhoeven Festival with 1992's Basic Instinct. Let's sexy dive into this thing. everybody i am adam sherlock and i'm adam pulcher and if you like what you see slash here please like and subscribe on all of our uh different channels spaces and places spaces and places everywhere that uh, you consume media you're bound to find us uh deep dive film school how is <laughs> that so <laughs> it's getting better every week um <laughs> speaking of getting better this festival just keeps getting better and better am i right oh man oh man yeah it's Paul Verhoeven is quite a character. I'm realizing after watching more of his movies, <laughs> that's kind of how. Is. That's kind of why we do these festivals, right? Is to to really dive into like someone's mindset, what they're thinking, like the themes over all of their stuff. Yes, this movie's actually pretty. It's a different type of movie for Verhoeven. You know, it's not based off of a book, which is most of his movies. Agreed. Uh, yeah. Which is part of the part of me is like thinking, you know, the ones that we reviewed or talked about with him. That have been based off a book. The book material, he's like, ah, whatever. I'm just gonna do what I want. No, and he's just so he's a like, craftsman. Why, yeah. Why? Why do that? But at the same time, like, I appreciate your mad genius. Like, I, I don't know what to say, but not based off a book, not sci-fi. Um, does have some of his regulars, like uh, you know, Sharon Stone obviously was in Total Recall. This is one of her earlier movies. You know, I can't list the amount of female actors that didn't. Except the role of this movie, it because, was like fourteen uh, of them because I think. of, you know, it's it's definitely full frontal nudity. Uh, let, let's be honest here. Well, uh, and for nineteen ninety, what year is this? Two. Yeah. So I mean, what what he what he was really having a cast do here, he wanted more than anything to have to be the first movie that has a, a an erect penis in it, and he didn't get his wish. And Damn apparently it. it was in so, uh, let me, Michael was Douglas's the, uh, contract. Yep. I saw that. Yeah, that, that he was like, can't do full frontal. So great question here. What was the first movie that did have an erect penis? Do you know? Since this was supposed to be Brown Bunny. Happened? <laughs> that's actually probably right. I don't know. <laughs> I, 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 can't, I can't think of a lot outside of just basic porno um i yeah i don't know i mean this movie was very controversial you know 1992 let me think i was born in 1979 so i'm a very young child there you know 13 yeah 13 years old when this came out you see the controversy you're a horny suburban middle-aged white you know middle Middle class class, white kid uh, you know, like, you know, just like, yeah, this looks awesome. And, and then you throw the not NC 17 tag in on yes. it and, and it throws a whole loop into like, Ooh, where's the line between porn or even soft porn and this movie. So did you, did you do this at this age? Cause I remember doing this at this age where I saw the movie and then I had a conversation with some of my friends where I was like, I was reading in Entertainment Weekly, that to get an R, he had to cut 40 seconds out of the movie. And then doing this, think about that. One Mississippi, two <laughs> Mississippi, three Mississippi. And being like, that's so much stuff that he had so to cut. So many nipples. And then you're like, yeah. And now, like as an adult, some of these sex scenes, at some point I'm like, oh, okay, let's get back to the plot. What else is happening? Because like, this is just... Yeah. It's just, I mean, a, it's just, <laughs> it's a I, sex I mean, scene in a movie. I don't know. Similar to, similar to our punishment <laughs> review that we're ending out this festival with showgirls. I 
probably only saw parts of this movie, <laughs> if I'm being completely honest. You know, uh, you know, uh, I don't know. I, I when was the first time that you watched Basic Instinct all the way through as a movie? Yesterday. No. Um, <laughs> No, I remember. I remember watching it uh, on VHS, no less. I remember. Yeah, that sure. We, yeah, yeah. Uh, me, you know, weekend with my buddy, sleepover movie, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, there is then that. You period. go your own separate ways, and that's that. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Why is he laying down on my mom's couch like that? Um, but. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> but it does, oh, you know, there is, it, it is another in a long line of like sexy thriller movies. You think about like Body Heat and Fatal Attraction, Color of Night. Like well, there are all these movies the, that were like almost, almost that like Skinamax level. Those are all had, 90s like, movies though. Yeah. This yeah. movie wouldn't exist today. Like, so the, the guy who wrote this, Joe Esteraz, uh, Esteraz, I think is what it is. He that's wrote right, Show, yeah. Showgirls, but he also wrote Sliver. Very similar type movie, yeah, uh, with Sharon Stone and I believe Billy Baldwin. Billy Baldwin, where, where yeah. he like records. It's I a voyeurism like, kind of movie. Yeah, that's what yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, he like yeah, records yeah. all of the ladies he's with, and then does Which again them. like harkens back to something like Body Heat. Um, but like this guy is into the sexy thriller. Oh yeah, for sure. Well, in this movie, the opening scene, the first minute yeah. of this movie Ooh, is right off the bat wild. Yeah, I, mean, I did not naked, remember the crazy violence. Naked sex, ice pick murder in the first minute of this movie. And I don't know what version did you watch? Did you watch the? Did you rent it on Amazon? I, I think it was no. I mean, I own this movie. Obviously, I have a 4K <laughs> version of it. <laughs> I don't believe it's you. behind me yes, in the bees. It's, it's in the it's in it's in the wall. Um, well, because and I realized that I was it's watching in the sexy thriller section. <laughs> <laughs> the, the sexy whodunit section. So, um, but well, I realized I was watching the director cut version because it didn't say anything about that on Amazon. But it, yeah. in, the, in that very beginning shot, again, it's so interesting that one of the guys, even in this movie, that Verhoeven uh, pulls in to work on it is Rob Bottin. And so yeah, I was all- going to say, this is the most, the first minute is the most we see Bottin's like hand in it right yeah it's probably this first scene and that's it but this shot where the ice pick goes through the guy's face and down through his nose is actually how you know you're watching the director cut because that got cut from oh. the theatrical. that specific little snippet got cut from the theatrical version so that's part of the 40 seconds that's part of the 40 seconds <laughs> not 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 the 40 seconds i was thinking about when i was uh 14 <laughs> But of yes, course. that is part of the 40 seconds. <laughs> I, I think people have to realize we lived in a time where it it was cable. Uh, cable was fairly new. You had the pay premium channels like HBO and Showtime. But you also had the extra channels that you can like watch. And it's just bzz, 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 the whole time you're <laughs> yeah. like... You hope you see a nipple, but like probably it's not a nipple. It's just in your head. Well, it's and, the, and like the world was a different place. That's the best. <laughs> that is the best horny teenager Rorschach test of all time. Yeah. Is it's just these <laughs> wavy lines, and your your friends are sitting there going, "I I know that was a nipple. I I know it. It had to be right." <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh man. Um, well, okay. So the, let's get I into mean, this. Let's folk, get into this yeah, thing. I think the folklore of this of this movie probably has a lot to do with what we're just kind of bullshitting and joking about here at the beginning. But I agree. This first scene, uh, right off the bat, you're like, "Whoa!" Not only is it this like wild sex scene, it is crazy violent. Yeah, um, it turns super and, bloody really quick. You know what? No body doubles for anyone in this movie. Good on you. Yeah. Nice work, everyone. Uh, but we have Michael Douglas in his prime. Sharon Stone just so foxy and Ed just controlling and owning the camera. And really uh, her first breakout film. She was getting ready to quit acting when she did mm-hmm. this because she'd already yeah, been in the be industry lawyer. for like 10 years, right? Mm-hmm. And so she's like, that's it. I tried... And little did she know, and I mean, my God, is it deserving? Because she owns the screen here. She well, owns it's, it. it. It's fun watching Total Recall and her, even though it's a pretty minor role in that, you can see how quickly she can change. Uh, you in, talked about this when we, when we reviewed yeah. it. Yeah, and yeah. It was noticeable. I was like, whoa, yes. that's yeah." I mean, it was effective. Like, you believed her as an actress. 
I, I I mean, so let's let's lay out the plot really loosely here. You have Michael Douglas, who's this detective in San Francisco. He's you know, investigating this brutal murder. He's already um, kind of on the shit list because he... Yeah, he, I was going to say he's being investigated by the internal affairs. Uh, uh, you know, he he's not the best guy in the world. Let's just say that. Uh, but He's not drinking know. or smoking anymore or doing coke anymore. So That's because, right. No you booze, know. no coke for three months. But there's this kind of underlaying, like... He's under investigation for shooting some tourists, which is kind of a weird thing that we never go back to. Yeah, uh, we do have we do have Gene uh, Jan Triplehorn here, uh, who plays kind of the shrink, and you know you get working with the, internal affairs. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. get all the tropes of not only just a woman in a police force. Like God, could you imagine being that in the nineties? Would be no. terrible. Uh, but uh, just the misogynism and, and it like, oh my God, this movie, and it will get to the actual sticking, but like this movie is so written by a guy. It's not even funny. Um, oh yeah. But, but, oh, yes. but you know, <laughs> uh, we, we have, you know, this brutal murder, uh, 31 stab wounds that we witness, you know, uh, but her character is the prime suspect here. She doesn't have a motive. She was at her house by herself. Um, she's a uh, writer. She, she wrote a novel yeah. that was basically about this. She um, has I love it. It's in literature and psychology. Yeah. The, 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 the idea, and this is kind of like, I, I almost think of like something, this is, you know, it's not a great movie, but it's something that came out around the same time. But like the movie double jeopardy with Ashley Judd, yeah, yeah, where, yeah, I remember that one. where she goes to jail for murdering a husband when she didn't actually murder him. And now she's out and she can murder him and never be pinned with it. So there's this, there's this thing here where everything is, you know, basically the way this person was murdered was in her love hurts book. So she's like, yeah. would I be stupid? Her whole alibi is, would I be stupid enough to, murder someone the same way well and, uh, and, and as in my book and and the 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 um psychological write-up about her uh comes in this brilliant scene i love this man every time that he saunters onto a sound stage to give us a little bit of his genius but mr St- Stephen tobolowski yes mr ned ryerson himself ned um ryerson. does such a great job here um uh uh kind of talking about uh, uh, what what it would take for her as the killer to actually do this, and it sets it up, it pumps it up in this really nice way. It pumps way. her up. It pumps exactly. her up because um, you really, at a point, you know, you get to this famous interrogation scene, and I'm, I'm jumping ahead a little bit. You're but, good. Yeah. Uh, uh, but you know, she's in complete control here. Yeah. And she plays this room. Uh, you know, I I think that she. I, 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 she uses this to to work them, right? She uses this to have the upper hand and come in with all this confidence. Um, it's, it, they really lean on how devious and diabolical she is and how dangerous she is. Um, and it completely works. Well, that's the thing I want to kind of talk about is that I think, you know, there was a lot of talk when this uh, movie was first getting shopped around and what Verhoeven kept saying, and I think that it's completely true is that he was like, I want, I want to do a Hitchcock style film, right? I want to do a rear window. I want to do a vertigo. I want to do something like that. And he, that's exactly what this movie is. I mean, down to the, the score for it, down to the, the moments of total overacting in these great ways of Sharon Stone as being this femme fatale, Um, But I think that where it changes from where you could be like, okay, you know, uh, you're going to have a uh, uh, Hitchcock film and the femme fatale is going to be a sort of a Janet, uh, Janet Lee kind of a character. Right. Mm -hmm. And and she's going to sort of say her one liners and the cops are going to be like, and like look at each other and be kind of like turned on and befuddled by her answers. But the one difference is, is that Verhoeven in his heart of hearts is a total sadist. Like we know this <laughs> through his movies. Like even though he's doing sci-fi stuff, it's so overly violent and it's so mind the mind fuckery involved. Like he's a sadist. Like he loves it. He loves to have stuff be kind of gross and kind of icky. And here there's no difference. Why it's an ice pick. It's why well, her it's... character even if she isn't the killer, she loves 
messing with these guys. The games. So much. She, she loves. She loves. She, it, loves right? she loves the games. She's really good at the game. Uh, you know, writing teaches you to lie, is what she says in the movie. Because yes. she's a writer, you know, and she she explains the suspension of disbelief, which I'm a huge believer in, uh, especially yeah. you know, w- with everything involved uh, in, in in some kind of medium like a book or a movie or whatever. You have to be that. Um, well, yeah. So there's I, there, there's an old adage about that that basically said like, look. Stephen King thinks up these god awful things and he yeah. gets somebody to pul- publish them and he's a billionaire. If he is actually trying to like write it as a diary and carry these things out, he should probably be locked up. And so that's well, a very oh, <laughs> that line. For sure. right? Well, she, uh, Sharon Stone, um, you know, got so tired of people when she was doing press for this movie asking her like what about all the sex like and all the nudity oh my gosh can you believe it and she's like what about the murdering yeah. and like all this terrible <laughs> shit that it, she also did yeah it's yeah. not all about my nipples you know it's not you know according to a poll from uh, uh, a subscription service called love film sharon stone's infamous leg crossing scene has been named the most paused blink and you'll miss it moment in the movies it's meant to embarrass them which is i think a super effective part uh but she she dupes uh, she uh, apparently was kind of duped into doing this Verhoeven didn't tell her uh that she was doing there's this. There, two different there, yeah there's two different there, accounts but there is yeah. a he said she said part of this for sure uh she asked to get it removed and then he denied it and then he denies that that even happened then she was excited about it so there, there's definitely here but yeah she th- i'll tell you, you know, one you, thing we know for sure no matter who duped or didn't dupe newman's eyeballs almost fell out of his <laughs> skull when she does it newman I mean, it yes. is incredible. And actually, apparently, that, yeah, that, per, that particular scene, Spielberg saw that. And he said, mm-hmm. I sat in my seat until the credits rolled to get uh, Wayne Knight's name to cast yep. him in Jurassic Park. Um, Wonderful. But let's talk about this interrogation scene for just a uh, second. Uh, obviously, uh. there's the uh, uh, uh. obviously there's <laughs> the leg cross scene, and that's a huge part of it. Sure. But I love so many other elements of this scene before that the blue lighting the square grid shadows that are coming yeah. from up above uh the concrete the little cups of water they keep going over to the water to fill it up and i love that on one side of the room is a bunch of crumpled suit schlubby men and on the other side is this poised pristine slick Beautiful, back yeah. fresh faced sexy woman Full. who's just completely in control of the scene right Exactly. Uh, again, back to my point. She's definitely written by a man. She gets yes. into what she likes. She's powerful and controlling. She apparently has sex with everyone. And, you know, just like... I mean, you know, that goes good. Yeah, it's because a guy wrote like, it. It's, it's, <laughs> exactly. It's such a male mental uh, thing. But, you know, she passes the lie detector. Um, apparently... Michael Douglas and Sharon Stone didn't really get each other, get along during this movie and were kind of intimidated by each other. But it actually, Sharon Stone actually said it ended up working really well for the movie. Hmm. Um, and she still doesn't completely like, not, she's not complete, but she's not completely comfortable with Michael Douglas. Like it, it just didn't really. So this but, isn't, it, this is know, like, it, it helps the production, but it still is probably like, Ten too real. St- well, I was going to yeah. say 10 steps down the ladder from Shelley Duvall in The Shining, though. It didn't break her brain, but no. you probably can't watch this movie and find any enjoyment in it. Yeah, and there was a lot of controversy about this movie, not only because of the sex scenes, but also this was in the heart of the AIDS epidemic. Yeah, And so people were like, you know, th- there's this very c- graphic scene with G- Gian Triplehorn where... You know, I think you could probably call it a rape. It is. Um, it and, is. I um, know, and I thought that too. And it's and, and it's so yeah. fucked up. I mean, it is. It. She's. She's saying. I mean, he goes home with her from the bar. She says no, and I even wrote down. I'm like, yikes. Like, yeah, and it's, this, I actually I have the word yikes re- as well. <laughs> this reminds me of like something like Saturday Night Fever, where like, oh, it's the scene, it's the movie where he's dancing on the street, but like, oh wait, there's a scene in here where he just basically rapes a woman in the back yep. of his car. Yep. Um, and yep. Uh, now, now it, I w- it shows you the systematic 
male tendencies in Hollywood. She's definitely getting in, in his head, you know, at, at this bar where he does start drinking and smoking again, everyone kind of pauses and looks and yeah. he, he seems changed, right? Like he's like a bad boy now or something. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't completely know. He's a bad why, boy. But I, I don't know, you know, it's, it's, it, it, as a movie, you know, I, you, you talk about like, obviously, you know, her spreading her legs and, you know, intimidating these people is a big part of it. But I really think it's just a big part of her character. I know that's probably the most iconic part that was taken away from this movie. But when it comes down to the movie itself, I think there's so much more going on here. Um, oh, you know, totally. I, I think the fact that she knows so much about him before they even meet is a major red flag. Oh, totally. Right? Well, she's, yeah, I mean, she's she's throwing up red flags left and right completely. <laughs> um, while we're on the subject of that, that awful scene with Gene Triplehorn, can I just, and I, this shouldn't be my takeaway from that horrible scene, but what kind of grown-ass woman has Bart Simpson on her key ring? <laughs> it's weird, right? It can't just that's, be me. That's what you take away. That's I mean, I took other things away from it, but that I just hey, I was like, w- I couldn't stop looking at it. I'm like, who does the set dressing for this movie? Why, why is it Bart Simpson? What is she? Fourteen? Hey, I'm Bart Simpson. Who the hell are you? <laughs> yeah. Apparently, I'm Michael Douglas, and I'm in this movie with you. What shrink has Bart Simpson keychain? Um, That's a great. That's a. I mean, let's. We should have a whole other episode about that. But just about that, I know, right? Um. So we get a car chase scene after this through the windy Very California unsafe. hills. Very, Very unsafe. unsafe. <laughs> um. Can I just say, and I feel like I've said this to you before, I hate car chase scenes. If it isn't French Connection or Ronin, just leave it alone. Just don't do it. Just don't do it. You don't have to do it. It's already it's been done well enough. Find a different way. I to agree. Have tension. And, and it is thrown in there, but this driving is unruly. And how could you not know someone's tailing you in yeah. this situation when they're I'm like sorry. trying to trying to <laughs> get around a <laughs> Mack truck to, to get yeah. to you, and you're in and your Lamborghini, every, I guess, or yeah, whatever. Every, you're like, yeah. It doesn't even have a rear view mirror. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> so, you know, you were talking about the controversy here and, and, you know, the, obviously the AIDS part was a, you know, in the, in the day and age of the AIDS epidemic, like that was again, very much this. And Michael Douglas actually said that that was one of the reasons why he wanted to do the movie was because he felt like at that time and place, he was like, are we, are we ever going to have sex scenes in, in movies again? Like, and then this script came, uh, Across his desk and he was like, hey, think. okay, you know, I know. But, um, I mean, this is the guy who did A Perfect Murder with Gwyneth Paltrow and Disclosure with Demi Moore. And like, Fatal Attraction with Glenn Close course, where he has sex with her say, in the yeah. sink, yeah. So, now, like, he, 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 he definitely hinged himself to these kinds of movies. And he's, you know, to his credit, he's awesome at it. Totally. But, uh, but, but what I was going to say is that, you know, the other really big controversy here is that the L- the same LGBT uh, uh, gay pride crew that uh, showed oh, up yeah. to picket Silence of the Lambs um, also showed up, you know, the next year <laughs> for this movie uh, because this whole idea of like bisexuality um, or or you know lesbianism as being like oh well she's crazy and obsessed and she's yeah. killing people because and so it's just another excuse to show non straight people as being crazy or murderous. And they sure. actually were showing up. Um, they f- th- someone leaked a version of the script um, uh, to to the LGBT community. So they were showing up on set with signs that said things like, you know, honk if you love having sex to get uh, people driving down the street to honk and ruin takes of the movie wow. when they were out filming on the streets. I, I read that they also showed up at you know, when it was starting to be released basically with spoilers of saying Catherine did it. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Which didn't work because this was like the highest grossing movie uh, yeah. when it came out. Yeah, it did, I mean, it didn't you know, work. it's uh, controversy breeds curiosity, I right. think. And people, uh, people definitely went and, and, and uh, you know, played games with them. Now, let me ask you, is this, you know, is this definitely a sexy movie? 
Um, sure, very sexy. Was it? Do you think it's NC seventeen worthy? I bet some millennials that are watching this are like, "What's NC 17 Yeah, <laughs> that's kind of how I feel now. Is it's like after watching like after watching a lot of like Gaspar No films, I'm sure. just like. I, that are yeah. basically just have unsimulated sex in them or, you know, same thing with, um, uh, Oh, what's his bucket that did antichrist. Um, oh yeah. Uh, Lars von Trier. Lars von no, Trier movies, right? The, these like, days, this not... is tame. I think this is tame for these days. Uh, interesting tidbit is, uh, Verhoeven knew the MPAA was going to give him shit about this movie. Uh-huh. So he, he shot just tons of different angles of the sex scenes so he would have footage to cut back to to um you know get close-ups or maybe not see as much skin or whatever it may how be met, how he long had, were the sex he had, scenes he had 14 recuts of this movie oh my god and you know i'm <laughs> sure it's i'm sure it's playing with those 40 seconds that you're talking yeah, about. yeah right? man those are important um, 40 seconds but i i mean you know when i was watching this i never yeah, uh, I never really thought that it was portraying LGBT people or or, or lesbians. I, I never that was my instinct to think. Oh, but th- I'm also watching this now in 2020. If I was watching in 1992, I may have had a different point of view of it. But um, but I think it's kind of interesting to to look back at that because I I never thought like oh her her roommate slash girlfriend or whatever she is like she's crazy and she's also crazy like yeah i think it's like it's more of just like underrepresentation is anything other than like a lurid side point side plot now what's interesting is is the original writer what was that guy's name joe esterhaz so apparently uh he had a huge falling out with verhoven while they were working on the film multiple times because verhoven was like no we need a lesbian sex scene in this thing and and the writer well, was like, like the, he was the like picture yeah uh, the Christopher Guest movie where where the producer is like yes but what if there was a lesbian scene? yes exactly. he just wants to inject lesbian scenes into yeah, every yeah. movie he's doing so yeah it's so, exactly like that but then you know in uh in Verhoeven's uh uh to Verhoeven's credit he tried writing in a scene that would be a lesbian scene between those two actresses. And he's like, every time I tried to do it, it was wrong. And he's like, so he made like in uh, the trades or whatever, he made like a public apology to the writer and was like, you were right. I was wrong. Like it shouldn't be in there. It is lurid. I'm not going to do it. And so I was like, that's really interesting. Even though he probably knew like, oh, I want to push all these boundaries. I want to do it this one way. It wasn't right to the characters. And so he ended up pulling it out, which I think is really interesting. For sure. Uh, Um, you know, I appreciate that in a way. I I assume that probably doesn't happen very often. No, in, in ho- especially in Hollywood. Now I'll do you, I'll do you one where better. You're making a fun, sexy thriller. Like it doesn't really seem like you're like ah whatever. For all the things in his career that he was like ah whatever. Uh, the fact that he did that, I think, is really cool. Yeah. Um. Uh. And now put this feather in your cap along with that. Did you know that the role of Nick? Michael Douglas's character was originally supposed to be a lesbian cop and was written with Kathleen Turner in mind. Whoa. Well, that's a different movie, right? I want to see that movie though. Uh, I think that Catherine sounds Turner, wild. Kathleen Turner would be awesome detective and lesbian. Let's just put that <laughs> out there. How, hey, Pulcher, how about both? Yeah, let's, in the let's same twist movie. It up. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Same movie, but you know she she's got that gravelly like I've been smoking for 50 years. I know it's like, the best. Oh, it's the I, best. I could see it for sure. Um, so you know we get this kind of fake out here with them having sex the first time, right? And you get kind of a reenactment of the first scene. So and... many fake outs. There's so many. <laughs> is she going to stab him this time? How about this time? It happens like five times. It's like having a, is it a dream or isn't a dream yeah. scene where you're just like, stop doing that. And I, I'm not sure if there's something wrong with how Sharon Stone has sex, but not only, <laughs> not only speaking does, of hot takes. Yeah. Not only does, the music ramp up whenever she's on top 
and yeah. kind of reaching back. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, every time, it doesn't matter what's happening. Yeah. It ramps up, making you, it's faking you out. Uh, but it's also, she has this, I'm, I'm probably being a bit graphic here and I apologize, but she has this weird like gyration <laughs> on top where you're just like, what is, that's not like, you're you're having movie sex right now. It, it turns look out like real it sex. turns out it, she's never had sex before. <laughs> yeah, this is just yeah. do what you think she, they do. Do do what you imagine. Vir- she's a virgin for sure. <laughs> uh, I I really I really hope you're uh, you're showing. There's I don't know. So many, oh, there's I, so uh, many. There's so many deep dive film school logos around the. That's the thing, the man, Right now, I don't know how the hell I'm gonna do the b-roll on this my god dude oh j- yeah you just got to put the logos uh, good. a couple <laughs> observations couple stray observations um i know he's only a couple years older than me uh in this movie michael douglas yeah but uh boy he sticks out like a turd in a punch bowl at that dance club doesn't he i don't care how cool his his v-neck shirt is i'm like dude you are like 30 years older than everybody else here <laughs> Yeah, that's probably true. I didn't really notice. But oh, yeah. it was painfully I mean, obvious to me. I was like, get out of there. Get out. Everybody been, knows you're a cop. Everybody knows you're their dad. Get out of here. Been, we've been to clubs like that, and there is always at least one of those guys. I know, uh, but it's I sad. Think, I think you don't want to see I mean, that. It's sad. I, I, I hope I'm never that guy, but yes, I agree. I know. I um, felt vicarious embarrassment. I was like, get, get out of there. Um, so he has this conversation after they have sex, in the bathroom where Roxy, the girlfriend is like watching. Yeah. And he's like, man to man, this is the fuck of the century, which is an awesome line. Yeah. Um, (laughs) And and he talks about, you know, being frightened is what makes it so good. Right. Cause he's afraid he might die. She, she might kill him. Exactly. And then you're like, Oh, so wait, do we have a jealous girlfriend thing going on here? Like, what's going on? Is she the on? killer? There's a lot yeah. of red herrings here. There's a lot it, of red herrings. There definitely is, because we do get this car chase after he gets, you know, his awesome partner. Uh, oh, what is his name? Uh, George Dezunda. Uh Yeah. He, he, you know, he's all wasted and ends up driving home drunk, which in the movie, I'm like, oh, this guy's dead. It's got to be. It's like, got to be why <laughs> they put that you scene never, in. You never want to do that. And he ends up being just fine, but it quickly turns to michael douglas being run over by a car and that person goes on a car chase and kills himself and it ends up being roxy in the yeah. lamborghini yeah and so then i'm like so okay so this is basically so i married an axe murderer <laughs> 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 like <laughs> because i mean that's essentially what we're end up coming to right oh my god it is so i married it an axe murderer was probably after this movie but still i'm just like huh oh my god okay so the jealous sister slash roommate slash whatever i never thought and- about that <laughs> you're absolutely right it's so i married an so, axe murderer well and then we take this like rapid f- twist with beth yeah um gene Triplehorn's character um and you find out oh they went to college together and she's not telling her a lot of this stuff and she ends up being this obsessive and uh you know ended up finding out oh i slept with her in college yeah and this lesbianic a lot, experience a lot starts to come up yeah you're like okay why have you not said any of this before yeah. like yeah. this would be pretty relevant and so she she fesses up about her past but i thought it was like quite a twist or like oh Again, another red herring where you're like, oh, okay. Wait, so where am I? Where are you going with this? It's, yeah. This movie's a little all over the place. So let me ask you, I, uh, with all that considered, by the time it got to the very end of the movie, because again, it gives us the fake out like five more times <laughs> of like, she's going to kill him. And then you're like, oh no, she and isn't. She was getting a cigarette. Gus gets whatever. killed in the elevator. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, there, and there's a big showdown. With yeah, uh, it's like uh, the scream. It's like from Scream. He's wearing totally a robe is. and a it blonde totally mask. Yeah. yeah, and <laughs> and and so and then he shoots uh, Beth, Jean Triplehorn's character, and kills yeah. her because she was getting out her Bart Simpson keychain. <laughs> um, she really was though. I'm not making that up. I know that's what she not. was getting out. Um, <laughs> which again, I was just like, really? That's we're still doing Bart. that, huh? So. Mm. Um, then at the very and then and then he goes back and he and he sleeps with Sharon Stone again, and then it's like and then we do the fake outs and then the very end we go down under the bed and there is an ice pick there. So 
I guess yeah. she she was the killer all along. Yep. Yep. I mean, so how that's, did she I mean, get from like the problem is is it makes so much more sense for Jean Triplehorn's character to be the killer. She's obsessed with her. Her I husband agree. got killed. They found the gun that obviously like so what she went and framed Jean Triplehorn's character? Like it doesn't none of that makes any sense. Yes. Um, you know, so I think both Sharon Stone and Paul Verhoeven and Michael Douglas have all come out and said that yes, she is the killer. She was the whole time. Uh, a big whoops by the writer was DNA evidence. Like they could have <laughs> caught they could sure. have easily easily caught her in the first scene if they did DNA relevant evidence, which it's 1992. I'm pretty sure DNA was a thing. Yeah, when did then. forensic files start? Like 1987? Yeah, I was say, uh, like, I uh, think uh, it's yeah. been, yeah, I'm pretty sure. So I, I agree. I was very satisfied with the ending of Beth being that very satisfied. I don't know. It was the reach, but I'm like, Oh, that's a twist, but cool. Yeah, that's good. And then, well, and they so set they, it up too, because there's yeah, like, they in the to- doing it. well, in the Tobolowski scene, they're all sitting there and someone mentions what if it was someone who read the book and carried out the murder to frame her and the camera pushes into Gene Triplehorn's face and the soundtrack goes wah, wah, and I was like oh, okay so it's her <laughs> <laughs> but it's like that at least makes some modicum of sense but yeah. I don't understand at all like so so she knew that she worked for internal affairs and shot the one cop and then planted the gun i mean this goes all the way back to college apparently uh i think the biggest thing that i took away from this movie is maybe nick should not be a cop anymore (laughs) not only is he not not very good at it but you keep shooting people that don't that aren't armed right like you maybe should take a break from being a cop and then you're having sex with the people who maybe are are really guilty um, yeah, I, it, it was definitely a dun 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 kind see, of and moment. I, and I, 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 that's so weird to me because when I watched it, I was like seeing the ice pick at the end. I was like, "Oh, you can't trust anybody." I would didn't it didn't feel like a twist to me that was like it was really her. Like it just yeah. felt like more garbage. Like it didn't feel like it made a whole lot of sense. Keep in mind, this is also was saying I was incredibly satisfied with watching this movie again i think it was so much fun it's super corny it's super it's, cheesy it, it is super corny but all of his movies are pretty corny yes. um he kind of embraces that i think verhoven knows what people like in a popcorn movie i think that's what i've taken away from this festival you know he would much rather blow something up or have a war with aliens than actually show you something you've seen a million times right so yeah i, think he, I agree get, with he gets that. he gets people to the theater especially in the 90s this was really important for you know if you want to be a, some kind of important director in hollywood so it's kind of interesting but i agree you know uh, he has he, he's definitely not apologetic he's not really overly sensitive uh, to anyone whether it's a race or gender or sexual orientation or whatever it is He is made for the 90s with this hard adult, unrestrained, sexy thrillerness that he embraces. And I totally agree. And I want to say this without taking away from the craft that he does bring, because I definitely think he does. But I think that he, in a weird way, his exuberance reminds me of much worse directors like not that he's a bad director but he his exuberance especially from watching interviews and things like that with him he loves the concept of movie making yeah the way that somebody like tommy wazoo or even ed wood does where they're like we're making a movie like a real hollywood movie right so that love of like let's have explosions and let's have chase scenes like that that makes him which is why it makes so much sense that him and schwarzenegger got so well along right because (laughs) it's like this idea of hollywood is this mythological thing and rather than trying to and challenging people through that kind of stuff rather than trying to be more laid back and more you know like oh well let's do this 
really smart crafted thing. It's like he, I mean, I do think his movies are smart. I think they're very smart, but I well, think within this, these, te- within these 10 years, they are like, he, there's the, yes. what you're pointing at is, uh, you know, is justifiable and I believe correct, but it also probably is the reason that his prime only lasted 10 years as a point, as opposed to something like 30, like Scorsese yeah. does a lot of bombastic, wild, crazy things. You look at Wolf of Wall Street, that movie is, wild and crazy and there's tons of abhorrent shit in it but it's a wild fun ride and you go along with it and i think you you kind of have to look at this part of film history and embrace it because really what do we go to the movies for right that's a really good point well and and when you were just saying that one of the things that went through my mind was the difference between spielberg doing something like et or close encounters and then you fast forward 20 some odd years and he does Minority Report. And you think how different the look of those films, the writing of those films, and the execution of those films is. And one was made for an 80s audience and the other one was made for a mid-2000s audience. What do you think this movie would be like if Steven Spielberg directed it? <laughs> Basic if Instinct? Steve, if Steven Spielberg directed Basic Instinct, <laughs> Like, is that a mind fuck or what? Uh, here, here's one for you. <laughs> has Steven Spielberg ever had a sex scene in a movie? I'm sure he has. Name the movie. He has, a, he has some rated R movies, but yeah, it's but, like no, Schind- but, but Schindler's List. <laughs> oh God, Jesus, no! Like, yeah, I mean, there's, but none of the, uh, you're right though. I can't think of a sex. I, scene I can't in think a of movie. a sex scene in a Spielberg film. Like, I mean. Something that's like this sexy, no way. But I mean, you know, there's probably I want I want just moments. even two people that are in bed and, and we stay with them while they have a sex scene. I think there might be one in Munich, but that's the only um, thing I can think of. I want to say maybe Leo and Amy Adams and Catch Me If You Can might have a moment, but I, I again they cut away right. See, so that's PG-13. the thing is he's like that's because he's like you're not gonna have like. You're not going to have a dude like that, like, be like, okay, now get out the ice pick. <laughs> like, it's not going to happen. It's not, but uh, it's, it's fun never going to gonna of, happen. It's, it's never fun to think happen. about. It's fun to think about. He could never do it. If he's like, <laughs> okay, now, Sharon, here's where you arch your back, and then underneath that, that, that scarf, uh, you're going to find your ice pick. And when you get your ice pick out, I want you to really grab it with both hands because it's, you know, you're, you're, you're trying to get through that neck area. Like, there's no way. <laughs> I kind of want to see it, though. <laughs> Just saying. Steven, let's, be it. let's have it be your swan song. <laughs> Mr. Spielberg, ding. <laughs> I am writing to you to request. <laughs> what is that contraption that you're... What is that? I yeah, I'm so sorry. Is. I don't know. Uh, it's an old-timey... Right, well, this- old, old- Old timey reel to reel, yeah. Sorry. Old time, old timey email machine. Yep. <laughs> um, well, this was a fun rewatch. Verhoeven is quite a character. This is probably um, might weirdly enough, I'd say I know what RoboCop's going to be because I watch that thing on the yeah. regular. With sure. the exception of our punishment review, this is probably actually my least favorite so far. Yeah, um, for sure. Um, it's just no not doubt, as much. I love, it, but it's his highest grossing movie. Here, I think it's one of the highest grossing movies he ever made. Well, I think a lot thanks to Sharon Stone to that one. Um, totally, I think that's well, just and the he reality knew it. it. He knew it Sex when he sells. saw her. Yeah. You know, he knew it when he saw her. He was like, and and apparently, like the studio kept going, no, top billing, top billing, top billing, and he was fighting for Sharon Stone from the very beginning. He wanted her to do this role, um, yeah. which is well, that's really cool, man. That's really. I mean, cool. it made her it made her career. She went on to an Academy Award with an amazing performance at Casino. She's a hell of an actress. Yeah, and definitely. Just, uh, just so goddamn gorgeous. It's hard not to be like fixated on her, right? Well, just like when gorgeous she's and screen. funny and scary all at the same time. She's very good at being evil. Yes. Um, and it's really fun to watch. So this, this, this was a fun rewatch, uh, mostly because it has this like history of... Of just, you know, from our childhood and just like, I don't know. I don't know how many people are pining for a basic instinct review right now, but it's also just kind of, 
It's also just like wh- I was. Why the hell not? I have. I, I was. <laughs> what do you? So, what else? Listen, hey, viewers at home, what the hell else are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Uh, hey, if you want more reviews on irrelevant movies, please like and subscribe yeah. to all the spaces and places. Thank you very much for listening. We that will be back. That was a great segue. That was a great Thank segue. You. Sorry, I don't we will to... be. Well, you've teased this. We'll be back next week with RoboCop. Very excited to dive into this one, oh, especially wait. in this current current state that we're in in 2020. Uh, which, yeah, well, yeah, uh, yeah. So thank you, <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, please subscribe. We'll talk yeah. to you soon. All right, we'll see you guys next time. <laughs> Mwah. So, uh, oh. what's... What's new? What have you been up to? Same old shit, man. Yeah. You like my you like my face mask? COVID schmovid. Because it, so is that because you don't believe that it's real or? Nah. It's fine. I believe this sunburn more than I believe that. It's been hot lately, hasn't it? Been hot. Ah, uh, I I haven't noticed. It's been it's been a little it's been a little warm. Yep. Ha <laughs> ha!